Um, this, real quick. Mm. Well, this work is important because I need you to be at the movement. Am I making sense? Most of you are my movement. And the young people sitting here, you should be enthused because what happens is you stand on the shoulders of people like us. Because I'm standing on shoulders. We're sitting here and we are so privileged to be in the Give Me building. We've come a long way as a as an elected group of people to see the diversity in one building and all types of artists merging. But am I satisfied with that? You know why? I won't be satisfied until I have the day where you will see people going on YouTube putting a pop a butt video. And they will do it in the corner, they will do it in the middle of the studio, they will do uh, all types of uh, new dances in the middle of the center, and they will videotape, and they will do anything they need to do. And they will put up one line and get 100,000 hits. We are on social media now. People can do social media anywhere they choose. Do you realize that? People make videos in the bathroom. For causes, people do all types of tapes to show their choreography. So why are we still in a century, in, a, in an age where we are still scared to say, I'm creating? And to some extent, your creativity is still being confined. Do you realize that? Do you, am, I, am I correct? Because what happens is, like I said, you are, you are amongst them. and you feel that you are still not us. I have a story for you, you're not. So you creep up on me, you're sneaking around, you should definitely be thanking me because this is the future of the new kind of thing. Because a lot of us are minorities in here, we're all mixed up. Thailand, black, island, Asian, all types of descents are in here. And we are not just one we are just a diverse group of people. And I just think we got to the point where we are, we're privileged. So we say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm fine where I'm at. I'm doing, I'm making my money. I'm doing my salary. I'm good. So now I got to watch you. Well, I got news for you. Be careful. You have the right to vote now. You have a voice. Skin is a voice. We are new pioneers. Uh, I really digested coming in for this piece and saying, let me start immediately at rehearsal. I'm going to go straight in like we've been rehearsing for the first section. And I just, something in me was just like, something's not right. We are so busy trying to impress the communities of dance that I was in the street and I saw a, a group of people meeting for different types of panels and mergers and I saw no woman of color. I saw no, I even saw, I saw one Asian descent. I was very, very taken aback. And you will have the, someone say, I concur. I'm sure, hashtag, I concur. I'm sure you do that. Like I said, again, because what happens is you don't understand that because you're not the little child from the hood that doesn't see themselves at Miss Fitness USA. You don't understand Black Life Matters. Because why? I, why do I have to understand Black Life Matters as a black person? That doesn't make sense. It simply doesn't make sense. No, you're absolutely right. It doesn't make sense because you're not black. I would never understand Asian Life Matters because I'm not Asian. I understand skin matters because we're all the same. <coughs> but if an Asian person has a shirt that says Asian life matters, I'm all for it. Because that's their way of making their statement that we all matter. Am I making sense? So who are you to take the right saying black is too much black life matters when we're being killed in the streets every day? We're being slaughtered every day. Just for the simple fact that we sometimes under injustices and sometimes under simple defamation and stereotypical uh, prejudices. 
I'm tired. You should be tired. I've had a choreographic pose down where I feel that my dancers and my company need to begin to document our works before we move as far as discussion is concerned. I believe that discussion should be let them in until we get this started. Because this work, we're going to start the movement at 4. But we will have a discussion for the diversity of the movement first. So I need you, Mr. Woodson, and I need you to uh, monitor all of this uh, uh, all the Satan that's back there because I am under jurisdiction right now to hold my rehearsal. I'm a paid renter and I choose to do so. about simply that I'm going to move those chocolate cookie chip cookies because I can see the people coming <laughs> <laughs>
and produce your own art from your own perspective in your own culture and then display it to the world in a form where it's colorless. Not so much including into the system that's already in place, but creating a new system where color is not the medium. And color does not matter and the art can speak for itself. So to me, diversity means being able to be included into something that's already existing, but at the same time standing alone on the outside and presenting yourself, representing your art and your culture from a first person perspective. For me, diversity is, what other than said, it isn't really about inclusion. It's more about being diverse. Well, diversity isn't diverse. Being individual, but being included. So mm -hmm. it's it's something that, that's really, it's almost like a dichotomy because you can't be in something and then not be in something. So it's like I, I describe a star. A star is a person who illuminates, who stands out from the, the rest, but he's still a person, he's a human, he's, he's an individual, he goes to the bathroom, he puts on his pants just like everyone else. So for me, diversity is really just about, it, it really is, is diversity is, to me is a, a double-edged sword because it kind of gives you the impression that it's I am so separate. sorry to intercede, Mr. Lance Pope. That is just so, it's my spirit burns, and I, I thank God I'm going to let you continue before I, I forget. That word you said is a double-edged sword. It's a weapon. Diversity can be viewed as a weapon. Yes. He said sword. A double-edged sword. Did you realize what he would compare it to? This is why we're talking before we start moving even more on this world circle. Because diversity of oh, eloquent individual is that we're viewed as it's sort of like for some people it's a weapon that we are so diverse. Because you said a sword. A sword is not a knife. A sword is a, a piece of, of chivalry. A chivalrous person uses a sword, especially if it's in warfare. And I agree that this is a, in a sense, this is a artistic warfare. Because we're scared to speak. We can't speak because the individualized civilization of creativity is not collected until you are able to express it within your own environment. And then, once you reach a certain elitism and you are in their environment, then they say, well, she's worthy to be displayed in my production. She's worthy to be displayed on my stage. She's worthy. Where did she go? Where did she stay? Who is she? Where, who has she danced with? Really? Hashtag for you. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, we all eat the same, drink the same, breathe the same oxygenated air. And we are skinny. And it matters. When you, when you, what I'm finding is, when we produce our own art from our own perspective and our own voice, the masses assume that that art itself is only geared back to ourselves. Like the only people that we can entertain or hold an interest is the people that experience the same culture and situation that we're in. And that's where we get to break the fabric. Because there's a big world out there and everyone needs to be exposed to the experience that we're trying to express, not just the people that are connected to it directly. There's a lot of people that have no idea of what our living experience was or what our history is, and our art is one of the ways we express that. And when we're expressing that, it should not be a black art or a black story. It should be a story that has some historical relevance and an art that's relevant today. And it should be able to just give a story based on the situation and based on the creativity, but not based on the skin color of the people. 
You find that in operas a lot. Most of the operas are European based. So most of the casting is casted based on that. And so you get a lot of people, European actors and actresses in those roles because historically those roles were written in that dynamic. Now we have a whole historian to tell. We have a whole lifeline to discuss artistically and we need a vehicle that's counter to that culture in the same way but we have the same amount of lanes to express ourselves as the masses already have in place. And I think that's the purpose of a forum like this, to get the numbers in place, to get a collective idea of what we want to present as a culture, as a people, as an art to the masses, and then demand inclusion while we self-produce at the same time. So without inclusion, we still be represented properly. Okay, we, so we've seen some diversity on the media, right? So we've seen it on new TV shows like Blackish, we have shows like the Mindy Project, so we're seeing diversity on TV, we're seeing diversity of course in music. We can see diversity on Broadway with Hamilton, which is a colorful, colorful cast. However, I feel, well, personally, I feel that when it comes to the dance world, I feel like we're not have the same impact. So my question to you is, why do you think that? I mean, I think it's a matter of access, and I think it's a matter of people not wanting to give certain individuals the chance and the opportunity. Um, I feel like a lot of times we're always put into a box. If it's not a black show or an Indian show that features Bollywood dancing or an Asian show, then we're not really included in the general population of like shows. We're always in a particular box. And I feel like that has to change. I feel that we as a people and minorities in general have a lot that contributed to America and to American society. And people pick and choose what parts of our culture they want to glamorize, what parts of our culture they want to make money off of. And at the same time, they are still keeping us out. So. I just think it's one of those things where we have to continue to break down walls and barriers and not say we're going to stay in this box. We're not going to stay in this box. We're going to be broken out of this box and we're going to tell our stories and we're also going to make money and be success off of our own culture. So. Most of the problems that we're facing lies in the story that we tell ourselves in history. So let's just be clear from the beginning. All of these institutions that we're trying to become a part of and include ourselves in, they're all managing stolen art. They're protecting an asset that they did not create. So why would they let the natural owner in to be included in something that they're possessing that they stole? So it makes no sense to try to deal with someone that is extracting your creativity and exploiting it, and then in turn asking for voluntary admission into that system. It's just a mistake. So we need to know, dance comes from Africa. It comes from an African essence. It comes from an African people. And it's spread around the diaspora and around the world through us. So everyone who owns it as an intellectual property that is not African in descent is a thief by nature. And they're harboring this art over generations and generations so we can forget that it's ours. And what we have to do is remind ourselves that it's ours through our own art, through our own productions, and give them something else that they want to steal and make sure we don't let them. Speaking of thievery, <laughs> so eloquent this huge. Mm -hmm. Speaking of thievery, there are many gestures in which we steal, many ways and many gestures on how we steal. From dance, to music, to fitness, to production, to idea concepts. I'm on a path of, I'm following the art of theory. The art of theory. How does one steal if you don't own it? What they do is they monetize the art, they put a value to it, and then they charge solicitations to third parties. 
So basically what they'll say is, if you're in this value in the world, it has no value because it's not in an institution where we can make money on it. So let's put a dollar value on it and make it exclusive and make it scarce where you can't get it anywhere else. So automatically we get the mentality that we have to go to this agency or this institution to get access to the creativity that's supposed to be free. Or those institutions and those higher elitisms that we are all privileged to have been a part of work with or study or what have you, we don't dare discredit from those people who help us. Please, for one minute, do not mistake what we're talking about for this new work and this new movement of work in choreography as far as. Choreography for me, as Foster said, is, is a, telling a story on the feet. Telling stories with the feet. Choreography is just telling life about the feet, whatever the poet is, I love it. And Foxy is just adoring. Martha Graham is adoring Duncan. All of the great pioneers, Alvin Ailey, Paul Taylor, Merce Cunningham. Oh, these are people whose shoulders we stand on. But what I find is so much strange is that why are we considered egotistical and pompous? When that is the way a lot of us have carved our identities as people of minority cultures. Why do we have to attend these places to say, I am good, I'm good enough. I work here, I'm good enough. So once we get there, oh, you didn't dance there? So where did she go? And what did she study? And what did she do? I find a lot of us incriminate each other. You have artists who work on a public forum that are so scared to speak because they don't want to mess up their salaries. They don't want to mess up their place in their distinctions and position. Because I find that the new pioneers, we are, we are some people who are fearless, and then we have the fearful. We have what we call a, a weed pioneer out there. They wear weeds. <laughs> so when they go outside, you see the weave of artistry. And when they come home, like all of us, they take the weave off. And then you see the real layer of epidermis that their followers of here comes from, okay? Or whatever that is. So basically, you see, basically you see the real hair. Yes. And um, we are under a falsification of artistry now is that I make an appearance here and, and because you have the power and what happens is you say, okay, well I have helped these people. But well, aren't they your friends? I also make it very tough on skin as the director and the founder of Skin One to Skin Two. When we create a work, to say, you know what, you must work equally as hard when you create. You have to work equally as hard when you create because it doesn't matter that you've been here a long time as a first company member when you started choreography or a second company member as choreography. What matters is. You play the role of contributing. And we get to places sometimes when we allow ourselves to be coached on who we should accept to give a grant to or who we should include in the company because such and such called you. You know what? I say shame on you. And there's another side of it too. Most of us spend our teenage years up until our thirties developing our craft and become experts in our craft and we have very little knowledge of the business behind the craft. So by the time we're an expert in our craft and we have our degrees and we're auditioning and we're working, we're more concentrated on getting a salary for the art and we're not really focused on how businesses are structured and how the industry at large does business. So every time you enter the limelight, you're entering as an employee. You're not entering with any ownership stake or any real any type of equity in the line of business that you're in. You notice that a lot of shows run in big houses. You see a big major theater, someplace like Alvin Ailey or Metropolitan Opera or Carnegie Hall or something like that. And the name itself connects it to a certain culture. It makes you believe that the art is coming from this culture based on the brand that is coming through. So what we have to do in this era is create new brands that stand for today's issues whether it's Black Lives Matters, 
white lives matter, whatever the issue, but the art has to reflect the issues of today, and then you have to create institutions that represent that time period. And then you will be the person casting and directing and bringing the answers through where they can have opportunities that wasn't there for you. Well, I'm working on my book soon, so. So, as Mr. Peter said, uh, so I just turned out to tie up, is that I, I would say they're all scared to say. I remember I'm going to give a capitation of one account in my life. I won't mention any names. But I could, as a new pioneer. I was told one place, why are you auditioning here? Don't you want to go to that place? I just looked, I said, I'll never forget the experience. I said, well, I should be able to attend an institution of higher education any place. Well, they said, well, yeah, but you're so, you, you, you're great, you should be over there. To, to, to be ready to, that's your aspiration. But because I'm black, I'll never forget that. Maybe it was a stem of advice because it wasn't from an offensive place. I believe that not all cultural aspects of uh, you know reference are for that. Yeah, you gotta stop being so sensitive because that's also a form of But I'll never forget as a young girl, I was barely, I, of course, I you know, I had some turns in my life, ups and downs. And trust me, as I have some peers in the audience, they also know I graduate with honors. Eventually, always graduating early and different things. Yes, it's my ancestors there. So, I was a young girl, I had no clue. At 17 years old, going to any type of study of 15 to 17, I'm like, you, that is why it's so important to be inspired in you because I should not be told you're a black girl that has legs and can dance, go here. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that I said, no, I, I want to be with you. I want, I want, I want, I want to learn. I want to see the world. I want to see. And thank goodness, and I'm grateful for my fitness aspect, which I'll be talking about. Because we don't want to give them too much life, okay? Because uh, this can be misconstrued, but are we fearless? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's because it's time for us to discuss before we start creating. Uh, you get to the point where you don't want to stir people's feathers because you might say, I might not be in the end group. Were well, you ready for a hashtag? She never wanted to be in the end group. <laughs> because any star or pioneer is not constantly looking to be a follower. We are leaders. I want to tell you a story. This goes back to 1984. I was a great dancer in Times Square, and I was recruited by a Broadway choreographer to produce a production that was going to be a fusion between break dancing and ballet. We got permission to go to the Spoleto Festival in 1984 in South Carolina as well as Europe. Now, this was the first time that mainstream classical America got a chance to see hip hop, and of course, they had their preconceived notions about what it would be. So what we had to do, we had to make sure that the music and the production was palatable to a classical audience, but still had the cultural in the nuances in it to keep it authentic. And what I found was, they thought that hip hop was a black experience. They didn't understand it as a cultural experience across the border, that it was a phenomenon that was a trend that we brought across America. They thought of it as a couple of little black kids, somewhere on a corner, congregating with an art that would never be nothing more than a craze. So I had to tackle that, and I understood the dynamic of not, an only, not it only being a racial issue, but it also being a form of ignorance when it came to cutting edge art because they just never seen it before. There was no box to put it in. So there was no way to put it in a lane where they could make competition, where they could say, okay, this week we have this production, next week we have that one. It was one of a kind, it was in a blue ocean. There was nothing that they could leverage it against. So they basically called it like luck, like, like that's incredible, or something like that, where it was just a phenomenon. 
but it wasn't a serious artistic creative energy that would sustain itself over a lifetime or at least a generation. Now we look 40 years later almost, and you can see everything moving this hip hop all the way to the postman with his hat to the side when he did his man. So with that cultural revolution, the stories of that culture need to be documented in our art and it needs to be controlled its own, but we have the intellectual property as opposed to selling it to the institutions that want to control it but don't appreciate it, yet alone understand it.
four of them will fly the work circle the ends, and you will expound upon what you have to offer for production when you need the alliance that we need to structure, is that we definitely have to come to some type of ground where we say, you know what, everyone's truth is their truth. At the end of the day, your truth is not my truth. Your truth simply can't be my truth or else you would not have something for the universe. In my own world, it would be a perfect planet called the purple planet of the E. Yes. But I love difference. I love big hair. I love short hair. I love, I love all aspects of people. And art should be exuding the same type of concept. We should celebrate each other. The world has so much trouble because we're not celebrating the differences in each other enough. And it doesn't mean because you're different that you need to be rude or out of context or overbearing. My soulmate told me, this might seem like I have ADD, but trust, all creative people have ADD, okay? Uh, attention deficit syndrome or whatever they call it, okay? But uh, it's because you're so creative, I find that your mind is just racing. It's going. And your attention span is so seemingly lackful because you are looking at one aspect and you sit there and the mind says, the component of artistry in you and your genetic is bored. And you go here. And you create here. And I want to change that. And I go, I want to move that picture today. And I want to do this in the studio today. And I want to do that. Newsflash, queer people, everybody has ADD. Okay. <laughs> All jokes aside, because we have some people who suffer from those factors. And I do, uh, depression and anxiety, and a lot going on today, so this team is just trying to sit there with me. But you do understand, start selling your, celebrating yourself a little bit more, and it will help with the, the stresses and the, and the stresses of life and with the challenges and the obstacles of which we try to overcome as artists every day. It is the reason why most artists are considered to have some type of mental challenge or they're out of the box of grandiose. We all suffer from one emotion that we can't cope with, and that is the emotion of disappointment. So much rejection from auditions, so much rejection from coaches and teachers and experts. So many times you went to the door and you didn't get accepted. So there's a certain amount of disappointment in you when you're creating, and that leads to depression and anxiety and mania and all these outbursts when you misunderstood creating. So that's why we're a fraternal order of people that are accused of being a really mentally challenged. When we're actually mentally advanced because we have the vision and the foresight to see the unseen. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wilson and uh, Mr. Cole, can you go into some of the things for the new work as far as what music is? Because you have a vast uh, experience from the music. Well, gym. before I speak about the new work, I, I like to on, on, on the um, present or the past. I think that Purple Planet, if you haven't seen it, you have to see it because it's something that, it's a story. It's wonderfully crafted, it's, it's colorful, and it, it has really the, the aliens in, the, pro, in the, the story have no skin. Some of them have no skin. So that's sort of an irony, you know, that is done by skin, it's a skin production, but the aliens have no skin, and some are purple, and, and it tells a story about all the things that we're talking about, prejudice. But I think that diversity, really what it really boils down to, and you know, I hate to sound like the, the straight business guy, but it, it really boils down to follow the dollar. And what Tina spoke about earlier about grants is so important. We have to devise ways to create and, and garnish our own money. That's the only way you're going to advance because as long as you're looking at institutions or people that already have money, then you're just going to be looking at them. And, and they will give you some crumbs. They will give you some of their money. But what happens to the creativity and the artistry, when you take those solicited monies, just like politics, your brand becomes a little bit less fearless because now you have interest to adhere to, you know, so I think that that's really an important point 
follow the dollar, create your own money, figure out ways to create your own money, yes. like Mr. Peterson, create your own venue yes. to exploit what you are And on that note, we're going to get to Mr. Wilson before we start. Yes? Um, wow, I'm just taking everything in. Uh, definitely, people should go out and check out the Purple Planet. It is about diversity. It's at its root. It's about love and acceptance, and we all want to be loved. It's about two different races or two different alien species coming together and having a big love. And I think the big thing from this forum that we had today is that we all need to listen to each other. We all need to respect each other's differences and also be able to, to share those differences without them being exploited. Um, a lot of times, like I said before, parts of our culture are exploited. People make money off of them and then they take credit for it. And this is something that has to stop. It's something that is just, it's something that should not be happening. Now, I feel like we are all free and we all have something to offer and we need to start breaking down the stereotypes and preconceived notions that we have about people, especially people of color. And you know, being a young black male, it bothers me that young black men are being killed, that uh, we're looked upon as being thugs and being judged just because of the way we're dressed where you want to serve the night and you see certain people dressed a certain way, it's okay if they're wearing a hoodie. It's okay if they're wearing the latest pair of Jordans. But if you wear it, you're automatically classified as being ghetto, as being a thug, as being uneducated. So I just would really want all of us to start looking at each other, looking at each other, and listening to each other, and learning how to just love each other for this day.
quick answer to that before we get to the actual issue. You know, I'm ready to. The price of success for women of color. the 
quad. Creating, 
and I find that most of the stimulus of creation, you have better creativity when you feel that someone is going to invest in you and they believe in you. So I have some questions just out there for some people that, uh, Miss uh, Allen, yes. could you uh, answer a question if you want to ask someone like, would you?